Hello everybody, Basic Ollie here, hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another GT Sport video. Today we have the first round of the second part of the season, I guess, of the Manufacturer Series, still with Mercedes in. We did not have the option to change, which I've got to be honest, I kind of wish I did, because I'm not a massive fan of the Group 4 car, but regardless, we'll crack on and we'll see what we can do. So as the lobby loads then, you can see there's 324 points on offer in this race. Now, I'll be honest, I have never reached 300 points before, and my goodness me, would I love to do it. So let's crack on with qualifying then, and see what we can do in this qualifying session. First thing you need to do in qualifying is always, I find on this game, is find someone you can follow and get the slipstream, be in that slipstream range. So, going into the center S's then, just making sure we take all the curb, through the second part of that corner because you can absolutely take the mick and then you can see we're on soft tyres for this one so there's just so much grip as you go through turn uh, was that turn four technically or turn three I'd say so turn three as we go onto this back straight looking for that 100 metre board braking just afterwards go down into third gear turn the car in nice and early two wheels on the kerb keep it in third gear and then accelerate out hard uh, you don't really need to touch the kerb on the left hand side here you can see still getting the slipstream with the suck as we say, from Mario Sonic, just braking on the 50 meter board, turning right as soon as you start braking. Keep it in fourth gear, don't be tempted to go into third gear. And as soon as you get all four wheels on the curb, brake hard. Two wheels on the grass on the right hand side as we go through turn nine. Two wheels on the curb on the left hand side. Still in that slipstream of Mario, proving absolutely critical right now as he touches the grass and the rear end of that McLaren barely hanging on. It was literally staying on for dear life and now we go through turn 13 getting ourselves prepared for the break point for turn 14 kind of about 20 meters before the 50 meter board there in third gear just this car's gears just don't suit this track i don't feel and it really bogs down as you go onto the back straight go through turn 14 here but we're so close to mario here who's also had the slipstream uh, by the way of the attends i believe by uh, gatos Greek in P2, but we're going to cross the line here. Very good lap indeed, I feel, with a 36.5. So that's a very good lap for me. I did try and go again, but could not improve on that one. And as we actually get to the end of qualifying, we're only, only a tenth off getting pole position, which is absolutely crazy. Um, really, really close. Um, two tenths between first and fifth, so it goes to show how quick the pace is here. But let's jump into the race day then, shall we? I've called the Sao Paulo Grand Prix. It is, it is, and it really, I guess, it was on Gran Turismo. I'm going to call it the Sao Paulo Grand Prix, sod it. Why not? Why not? We're going to start in P4 then. So as we get this race underway, let me tell you a few race details that you'll need to know. So this race then is 18 laps uh, around Interlagos. It is Group 4 cars. Everyone is stuck to their manufacturer. And there's a choice between medium and soft tires tire wear and fuel wear you don't need to worry about the fuel at all um, tire wear does get a bit dangerous shall we say about halfway through the stint so that's when you're gonna be looking to change your tires now obviously you can start on the mediums or the softs i have decided to start on the softs and immediately i have seen on my relative that i have managed to break a gap of one second now this is the opening lap and I was really, really wanting to get those 300 points. I was absolutely desperate. So I was just thinking of the quickest way to get to the finish line. I wasn't trying to overtake this guy straight away. I did not want to fight anyone on the first lap. So I decided to actually push him along and break that gap to the chaps behind us. Because honestly, the qualifying was so close. I thought, this is anyone's race. This is absolutely anyone's race. So if I just try, try and play this smart, finally, we could finally get 300 points on this channel, on this, I've never done it. I've never done it. I've always wanted to do it. I know many people have done it uh, around me, but I, I just, I don't know. I always seem to crack in these FIA races. I never seem to have the right car, the right track. But we finally have a combination I'm good at: Group Four cars at Interlagos. If I have a good chance, if there's any chance of me getting 300 points, this could potentially be it. All right. So we've got the McGann in front of us. Uh, we've got the Brit in P2, and they've got the Frenchman in P1. We have no idea what tyres are on. They could be on the mediums, we just don't know. Um, I would suggest with the pace these guys have got, they could potentially be on the soft swimming. Now at this point here, this is the prime opportunity, okay, on the straight, way more speed on the straight than McGann. We know it's slow in a straight line. That's when we overtake, we didn't lose any time at all. 
We lost a lot more time if we took him, I believe, just before turn four on the opening lap, because we may have to defend through the middle sector and then on the straight as well. So I think, realistically, that's actually worked out very, very well for us. So as we go through turn three, you can see the McGann is all over the back of us. Now, it depends really on our race as well. I know it's early on, but is he going to go for the move here? He looks for it, but decides to tuck back in there and think and basically just look for another opportunity later on in the race. Pretty smart move, I think. Not really worth going for the move there. And like I said earlier, I have no idea what tyres he's on. If he's on mediums, then he is playing an absolute ball and he's got some uh, cracking pace. You can see actually the Brit ZKP19. Uh, as we go through turn, I think this is turn 8, isn't it? Turn 8 and then turn 9, yeah. So as we go through turn 9 here, you can see I, but what I'm thinking here is the Brit here. It's probably on the softs, and I'm going to go for the me for the leader, probably being on the mediums here, because, I don't know, it just seems that Brit seems to have caught up, and he's all over the back of him. It could just potentially be the slipstream. I'm not quite sure, but we're only 1.4 seconds off them here, and we are going purple, but this is lap 2, so... You kind of do expect it. Now, are we going to see the Ferrari go for a move here on the Hyundai? The Ferrari's probably quicker in a straight line than the Hyundai, so I'd expect something to happen. But no, they decide to stay with each other. And we cross the line here with a 37.8. Now, the guy in P2 set a 37.7, so he is looking quick. And we go one lap later, and you can see he's finally gone for the move here, and he's got himself up to P2. But is he going to keep it? Going through the Senna S is breaking late, both of them, and it looks like he's got that inside line, and I don't think the Frenchman really in P2 decided to fight that too much. But this is all good news for us. Uh, the more they fight, the more likely we are going to catch up with them and get in their slipstream. We're only nine temps off here, so if we can keep our head down, we could potentially get in the slipstream as we find it. Well, I say finally, we're getting very close actually to drop in the slipstream of the Frenchman behind us in the McGann so if we can have an absolute belter if we can have a banger an absolute banger of a lap here we could potentially break the slipstream which would be awesome and if we can get a slipstream of P2 then well we are <laughs> we're in the money we could be in a very very good place indeed so we go through turn seven absolutely awesome corner and then go through turn eight on those curbs uh, cutting the grass there as much as you can, I reckon in real life you might be in a little bit of trouble there, but it seems to be on this game, as long as you've got some sort of wheel on the kerb, you're generally okay. You're absolutely fine. The kerbs at this place, by the way, absolutely massive, I will say that. But uh, yeah, you can see we're getting very, very close to the Frenchman, and as we zoom in here, we are finally, finally within three quarters of a second of the Frenchman, which means we get the suck. We do get the slipstream, we get the draft, whatever the hell you want to call it, we finally get that which means our lap times are going to improve we're going to get closer and we can attack and that's exactly what we've managed to do so by the end of lap seven and as by the time we're going to get on the back straight here we're going to have the chance to attack but I go too wide I go wide as soon as I get the opportunity and this is exactly what I'm talking about uh, when I say I just seem to crack in FI races we've dropped out of the slipstream one simple mistake half second penalty as well just to rub some salt in the wounds as well. Absolutely not the thing you want. Uh, one interesting thing tonight as we serve our penalty. You know the guy in the McGann? He's pitted. And we know how good the tyres on the McGann. And he was on the mediums. So he's only about two, three seconds behind, I think. So he is going to be looking good. So we decided to go into pits. The leader's on the softs. But the Frenchman in front of us was actually on the mediums in that Hyundai. So he has played an absolute... Uh, a worldie with a strategy to have that pace on the mediums and you can see all the people around us as well as on mediums as well so we're going to be in a little bit of trouble here as we come out the pits and honestly I can't quite believe it but as we come out the pits we're going to come up in P5 I just I cannot believe it the pace I put in I was so confident that we could potentially get a podium here because I just thought the pace was really good and you know, I just can't believe that we're somehow in P5 I felt like my lap times were good I felt like I put such good consistent laps in I just oh, I was just so so I was just gutted absolutely gutted that I was somehow in P5 and the worst thing is I can see the McGann the McGann's in P1 by the way so he's played an absolute worldie as well and somehow I've got it wrong and I don't know what I've, I don't know what I've done but I think it was just a strategy that screwed me even though I started you know P4 and I was on the soft tyres which is probably what you'd expect to do uh, it's just not worked. It's just not worked, you know, going on the soft tyres with a full tank of fuel, I just couldn't get the max out of them. And even though, you know, we were lapping 
we were the, one of the fastest on track on lap four we were anyways we set the fastest lap but uh, yeah it just seems as this second half of the race has got underway uh, unfortunately um, we're, we're in a bad spot now there's no doubt about that we're four seconds off the lead it looks like the people in front of us are on softs as well and yeah we, we're just barely in the slipstream of the Ferrari who by the way uh, was behind us at the start of this thing so he also started on the mediums and he's going to be in the softs so can we stay in the slipstream and potentially see if those soft tyres will kind of die out and our mediums kind of stay on? Well, I don't think we can because as we go through the centre S's here, you can see that Ferrari just got so much more grip and acceleration out of the corner and that was it because we lost the slipstream and that was game over already. That's it. As soon as you're out of the slip and I was on the worst tyre, I just didn't have a chance. Just did not have the chance and I tried and I tried and I tried. I really did. I gave it everything I could, you know, but I could only really muster you know, low 38, mid 38s, and you can see the, um, the Frenchman here, the NLR driver, uh, goes for a move up the inside of turn seven, and that was P5 done, and now we're down to P6. So maybe, maybe as the race goes on here, you know, soft tyres, that they'll die out, maybe we can get a position or two, but, oh, frustrating times, you know, really, really frustrating. I thought, I really, really did think this was the one, you know, but sometimes, it isn't meant to be, I guess. We'll, we'll, I think we'll get there at some point. We'll get the 300 points at some point. But it's not looking good for this one. It really isn't. But we'll try and hang on to the back of this um, this Frenchman as much as we can in the Viper. Um, but it's it's pretty handy in a straight line. And he's already got the suck of the Ferrari. And we go um, one lap later. You can see he's looking very quick. Um, much quicker than the Ferrari, actually, which is surprised by it. And he makes a move on the Ferrari and gets himself up to P4. And yeah, we just put in lap after lap after lap and there was just nothing left in the tyres. It was just game over, unfortunately. So we're going to cross the line here and we're going to finish a P6, you know, a P Steve. Not a bad result. Listen, it was a very good group of drivers here. They're very, they're all very, very talented drivers. And P6 is still a good result, but I'm a racing driver. I want to win. I want to win. Simple as that. And, you know... Disheartening, but we can go again. I, I, I've got no doubt about that. But uh, P6 in this one, I'm afraid, boys and girls. But we'll get them one day. We'll get there. We'll get there. And, uh, yeah, we'll take our 256 points and we'll we'll put our heads down and uh, we'll concentrate on the next one. But uh, I really hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please leave a like. Subscribe if you are new around here. And I'll catch you for the next one, guys. Take care. Ta-da.